I was 16 and visiting my friends down the road. It was maybe a three to five minute walk from my apartment. It's about 9 p.m. and I'm walking home. Being a female, I feel I have to be more alert to things around me when walking at night. I notice a man on the other side of the road walking in the same direction as me. I pay no attention to it because that's not unusual. After a minute, he crosses the road and is now walking behind me. I start to get uncomfortable and a slight wave of anxiety washes over me. I start walking a little faster and that's when I hear the whish whish of his legs rubbing against his windbreaker pants and the wishing is getting faster. No matter how many times I try to walk a little faster, so does he. When I get to the end of the road where I have to turn, I run a little when I'm out of his line of sight. At this point, I'm not even a minute from my apartment. I finally get there. I rush inside the doors and I spam the buzzer to get let in. I look out the window of the door and the man is stopped on the sidewalk three cars from me. The parking lot was six spaces, three on each side. He's just looking at me and I'm panicking. He starts walking towards me. I finally get buzzed in. I run inside, slam the locked door behind me just as he reaches the front door and run as fast as I could up the three flights of stairs. I was terrified. The moment spent between the doors waiting to get buzzed in felt like a lifetime, and the image of him walking towards me at the door is one I'll never forget. It felt like something out of a movie. To the man that followed me home, let's not meet. On my first summer back home from freshman year of college, I picked up a part-time job delivering pizza in a town around 30 minutes away from where I lived. The area, in rural Georgia, is known for having places that are in the middle of nowhere, and the pizza place's whole shtick was that it delivered to even the most remote areas imaginable within the town limits. I could fill books with the weird experiences that summer, from the call that came from a long abandoned warehouse, to the dog that got excited about the pizza in my hand and accidentally shredded my pants with their claws, but one will always stand out in my mind as the creepiest. It was getting fairly late at night, around 10.30 p.m., so I was confident at the time that I would be sent on no further calls before closing at 11. However, someone barely managed to miss the cutoff time, and our clerk accepted their order since they were so close. I was given the address and a single box of hot dough and sent on my merry little way. The first red flag was the driveway, or rather, the lack thereof. There was a mailbox, but no actual driveway, not even gravel. It was just grass, and a barely distinguishable trodden pathway that resembled more of a service trail than it did something frequently used. I bumped along, wondering if I was even en route to the place, when I saw a slightly above average sized house come over the horizon, horribly dilapidated and completely surrounded by overgrown woods. I guesstimated where the rest of the driveway led, and ended up parking in a grassy patch that could have been the walkway just as easily as it could have been the front yard. Headlights aimed towards the porch, as per company policy. I walked up to the door, but I believe that calling it a door is generous. It was a door frame alright, but the door itself was just a large slab of wood propped haphazardly against the side of the house, barely covering the entrance. This was red flag number two. The third and fourth red flag were also on the door. This included the A4 sheet of printer paper, with the words around back scribbled in all caps which was hanging just below the place where somebody had self-engraved the door with the title Manson Family Ranch. Typically, I would never go around to the back of a house, especially a shady, unlit house, and especially, especially at night. However, it was my last drop of the day, and I was ready to get it over with and be on my way home. Against my better judgment, I traipsed around to the back of the house. The door back here was an actual door, but it was covered in both cobwebs and fresh spider webs. Clearly, this was a door that had not been used in some time. I found the cleanest area available and knocked. I counted to 45 and knocked again. There were no lights on in the house, and I could hear no movement from inside. I knocked and counted again, and repeated the sequence three more times before I was finally creeped enough to decide to return to my car. As I turned, I finally heard a voice coming from inside the house, clearly agitated, but I couldn't tell what they were saying. I tried to knock one more time, and as I was counting, I heard something in the woods behind me. 
It started out as just movement deep in the trees, but soon enough I could make out distinct running footsteps coming directly towards me through the bush. As I'm standing there, coming to terms with my impending demise, I follow the direction of the noise to the edge of the woods, which is around 15 feet away from me. In the moonlight, I could clearly see the woman who stepped out. She was relatively old, maybe in her 60s, I would guess. She had long blonde gray hair, which was tangled and matted and hung down past her hips. She was in what looked to be originally a white nightgown, but at that time it was dingy and closer to a bayish brown color. She was absolutely barefoot, and her feet were covered in dirt, and what had to be blood, presumably due to the fact that she had just sprinted through the prickly woods where there was no trail to be seen. I never learned her name, but I still affectionately referred to her as Red Flag Number 5. She stopped short when she saw me and started to shake her head no, eyes wide. I stood there like a terrified deer in the most fucked up headlights ever. As she took a few more steps towards me, reaching out to me, finger pointed. Her voice came out way stronger than mine would have at the time when she spoke. You know how southern people can either sound like loving grandmothers or backwoods murderers? Well, she sounded like the latter when she drawled out, Oh no. No, no, no. No, honey. No, you get on. Get on out of here. I wish I could say I listened. I ran. I left. But I was so in shock at how events were playing out that my own self-preservation was put on a back burner while I tried to figure out just what in the Kentucky Fried fuck was happening. She seemed to realize that I was not moving. Even if I could not make my mouth move to ask her what was happening, or even what to do with the stupid pizza in my hands. She looked at me like she could have smacked the hell out of me right then and there, and proceeded to deliver red flag 6 through 12. Darling, did you hear me? You deaf or dumb? Young girls like you come out here, and then they don't get to leave. So I finally quit being the white person in a horror movie when I realized that this was not a funny little ghost story. This was 5 foot 3, 116 pound me potentially being targeted to be robbed or kidnapped or worse. So I dropped the dumb little pizza, which had serious serial killer toppings by the way, and started running back to my car, which I had stupidly left on and unlocked, as was usual for most of my deliveries. As I neared the car, I heard a slam from behind me, and I looked over my shoulder to see that wooden door had been pushed over and had fallen into the porch beneath it. As I was closing the car door, an older man was limping down the front steps, waving his arms like an airplane runway attendant at me, calling me a little bitch, telling me to get out of the fucking car now. At a loss for what to do, I called out something muttery and shaky and along the lines of, Pizza's out back. I floored my dad's shitty little 90s Lexus and somehow managed to avoid trees on the odd trail back to the main road, which was still 12 miles and several turns from any road that actually had a name, let alone painted lines. I reported it to my manager, and he said he contacted the police, but nothing ever came of it that I'm aware of. Either way, that was my first, and hopefully last, personal encounter with the self-proclaimed Manson Family Ranch. This was a few years ago, but I still get worried about going out alone at night. I had been at a bar with a group of friends, and this bar was known for having lock-ins for regulars. That night, we were allowed to stay well past closing, and I didn't leave until about 2am. I was a little tipsy and about a 30 minute walk away from home. Plus, none of my friends lived in the same direction as me, so I had to walk back alone. I should have called a taxi, but I was a dumb 18 year old. I'm walking along having a cigarette on a quiet residential street when I see a man on the other side of the road. I don't think much of it until he starts staring at me and crosses over to where I am. He approaches me and asks to use my lighter. Cool, no worries, I relax a little. He lights a cigarette and I walk off but he speeds up to walk with me. I start feeling a little creeped out and get the feeling something isn't right. Suddenly, he asks me if I do coke and pulls a bag of white powder out of his pocket. I say no and speed up again. Where are you going so quick, little girl? He shouts out, and now I'm really freaked out. I ignore him and keep walking. He speeds up again. Try it. You'll like it, he says. I say no again and that I've really got to get home, but he has other ideas. He grabs my arm and pulls me close to him. He tells me that he's going to give me the night of my life and I struggle to get away from him, screaming and crying for help. 
I manage to knee him in the balls and he lets go of me. I don't think I've ever ran that fast before in my life. As I'm running, I pull my phone out and call my dad, who literally leaves the house in his pajamas and runs to meet me. He walks me home and lectures me on how stupid I had been. I never saw that creepy man again and did report it to the police, but nothing ever came of it. Creepy coke man, let's not ever meet again. A little backstory. I worked at a large cell phone retailer through college. The store was in a busy downtown area of the city, so we saw a lot of class diversity. Everything from crazy tweaked out homeless people to business types on their lunch breaks. Because of this, they wouldn't let only females work at one time. Alright, story time. One rather slow morning, it was just my boss and I working. He was in the back office doing manager work stuff, so it looked like I was the only one in the store. This guy comes in asking about our phone plans. As I'm going through the sale, he kept getting increasingly nervous. By the time I checked him out with his new phone, he was weirdly giggle smiling and fidgeting. I thought he might be nervously gearing up to ask me out. As a socially awkward individual, I expedited the checkout process and quickly excused myself to the back office to hide it out. I'm sure anyone in customer service can relate to not wanting to awkwardly turn down people who hit on you at your place of work. He left. My day went on as normal. Then the phone call started. I answered the phone. Hello, this is blah blah. How may I help you? Just breathing. Hello? Breathing intensifies. My mind goes to the awkward guy early this morning, but I try not to jump to conclusions. Maybe it's a prank call. About an hour later it happens again. I hang up immediately and tell my manager, who offers to answer the phones. About an hour later, my manager comes out and says someone's calling with a question and they worked with me. Normal stuff. Hello, this is... Breathing. I motion to my manager, handing the phone back. He puts the phone to his ear, hears this creep and just yells, Ah, what the hell, don't call back here! The next few days, my store starts getting phone calls asking for me. Always responding I'm not working and can't say when I'll be back. I start getting walked to my car after every shift. Then on day three, after a morning of multiple calls, this guy just shows up. Just one male co-worker and I working all day. He walks in with a to-go bag of food, important for later, and starts perusing the headphone display on the wall. I motion to my worker, this is the guy, red alert. Hero co-worker jumps up and helps the guy. Hey man, what's going on? This guy was no longer normally awkward guy from a few days ago. He was calm, eyes opened way too wide, creepy smiling at my co-worker. Not paying any attention to me. How much for the headphones? Hero co-worker starts awkwardly keeping up his customer service, asking about which ones he may want, etc. This guy just stands there, saying nothing. Solid 20 seconds of not answering his questions. Just creepy stare. Then he turns without a word and walks out the entire time not looking at me. Once he leaves, my coworker tells me to go to the back and call our manager. I'm spooked. My manager says if he comes back, tell him he's banned from the store. Not even an hour passed and he's back, to go food in hand. This time the store is busy. I quickly explain to the customer I'm working with what's going on and run to the back office. We have store camera displays on a monitor, which I'm now glued to. I see Hero Coworker go up and talk to him. He just backs out of the door. This dude literally walks backwards 10 feet, never taking his eyes off my coworker, smiling. Coworker comes back and tells me to call the non emergent police number. Police catch him sitting outside with his doggy to go box. Coworker and I are peeking out of the window from behind the phone case display. Young police officer comes in and explains the guy said I asked him to buy me lunch and we were dating. I informed him I sold him a phone three days ago, and he was harassing me since by calling the store multiple times. Coworker backs me up, telling him about the creepy breathing. A while later, two police officers come back in to let us know he's been banned from the store. Older police officer says call back immediately if he comes back. This guy is on probation for doing this to other girls. What? The rest of the day goes by, and Coworker and I are on high alert. 
Close to the end of the day, we've settled down, sitting at a table shooting the shit when he goes, Don't look behind you. He's back. Just walk into the back room. This guy is standing in the window, looking into the store, just standing there. We call the police, but he left way before they arrive. A police car parked outside the store for the rest of the shift. I never saw Creepy Stalker again. I don't think his motive was to actually date me. I think he just got off on scaring girls. None of his actions were normal by any means, but Creepy Stalker, I hope we never meet again. I'm a 21 year old female. It was around June 2019. I was doing a closing shift at McDonald's I work at in town. We close up at 2 a.m. on the weekdays and at 3 a.m. on the weekends. It had been a Saturday night shift, so I was finished and out the building by 3.15 a.m. roughly. When this happened, I was living about a 10 to 15 minute walk away from my work in a flat that was mostly taken up by students. I didn't have money to spare to constantly get taxis, and I'd been walking home at night for the past year with no incidences, so of course, I didn't think any differently of doing it again. Majority of the walk was fine, and I was about 4 minutes away from the flat when I noticed the guy just standing around near the corner I had to turn to get home. I am wary when I see other people, but usually they're drunk and mind their own, or just ask for directions, or it's a homeless person as there's quite a lot in the city I live in, but at that time of night, again, they usually keep to themselves. This guy was dressed nice but casual. Looked around mid-twenties, well-groomed, tan skin, and this really strong-smelling aftershave. He obviously was a regular at the gym too, because he had a muscular figure and didn't seem to be too drunk by the looks of things, but who knows. I tried to keep my distance, but he approached me and started making really casual conversation, asking me what my name was, complimenting my accent, and asking where I was from. I stupidly engaged with him but gave him a fake name and made it clear I wasn't up for a chat. I should have been firm with my words, but I'm way too introverted and shy to speak up. Even my boyfriend complains I talk too quietly sometimes and I struggle to be direct with people. Throughout the whole conversation, he was always giving me this unsettling smile and would try to touch my arm or play with my hair, which I made as clear as I possibly could that I didn't approve of, not that he was even listening. He would just say something along the lines of, but you're so pretty. Not flattering at all when it's a man who won't take no for an answer. Anyways, this guy asks me for a hug and even though I refused him as politely as possible, he did it anyways. I froze up for a couple of seconds before I moved away which thankfully he let me do. He was being extremely creepy at this point and tried feeling over my sides as he hugged me which gave me even more alarm bells ringing in my head. I told him I had to leave, and as I was walking away, I heard, I'll walk you home, where do you live? Unfortunately, I had nowhere else to go but home. Nobody else was around, and it was too early in the morning. My roommate was also back at his own house, as he went back home every weekend. I had a hold of my keys in my pocket, and just hoped once I got to the building I could find a way in without this guy being able to invite himself in. I refused to walk home, but he followed me anyways walking about 8 to 10 feet away from me as I was speeding up at this point, but caught up as I crossed the road. I don't know why, but I decided to go the long way to get to my building, which is an extra 2 minutes so not that long. And as I was approaching the flat, I felt this horrible sinking feeling in my chest. The door to the building closes really slowly at first before slamming shut, so I knew even if I walked in he could potentially follow me inside, and that puts me at an even greater risk. By this point, he was begging to be led inside. He said he was extremely thirsty and wanted some water, but I told him my roommate is sleeping, a subtle way to try to deter him by showing I wasn't alone, but that didn't even seem to faze him. He was trying to be touchy and just kept pleading with me to be let inside, but I kept my ground and said no as best as possible. As he was talking to me, I managed to use my fob on the door and only open it enough to carefully slide through. However, he was right at the door and I didn't want to make him upset, so I apologized and told him no once again. Luckily, he had to move away from the door as someone wanted to get into the building. The guy entering the flat asked if everything was okay when he saw me, but I stupidly said everything was fine. 
That did give me a chance to move away from the door and let it close once the guy walked through. He either worked or lived here, but I wasn't sure. I didn't even look back to the guy. I ran up the stairs to my flat as fast as I could. I didn't get any sleep that night, and from that moment on, I made sure to always have money aside for a taxi. I think I walked home maybe once more between June through October before I moved. Really scary stuff, and I'm glad I never saw him again after that. This happened last night, and the night before. A little backstory first. I live in a not too safe area. The block I am on is okay, but if you walk down my street a block or two, you could get shot, offered drugs, be mugged, and so much more. When we leave our house, we head up a side street that gets us away from trouble. Like I said, my block isn't bad. We all get along here. Most people on this block are related to each other, all but for my household. But even though we are strangers to the neighbors, they are nice to us. The people right next door have dogs as well as a few other households. Again, we are the odd ones out in that department as well. The dogs only bark when someone is out on our block that doesn't live here. I have always felt safer because of the dogs. I live in a home converted into a duplex. When you walk in the front door, you are in the entryway, and then across the entryway, you see my apartment door. Then if you go up the stairs beside my door, you will find the door to the second apartment. The front door to the house has no lock mechanism at all, it's so the tenants cannot lock each other out of the house. We can only lock the doors to our apartments. When you come into the entryway, a motion sensing light comes on. No one is currently living in the upstairs apartment right now. So at this time, it's just me and my hubs living in the place. Two nights ago, the hubs was in bed and I was up watching TV. I was all relaxed and thinking about going to bed soon. It was nearly 1 a.m. Suddenly, I got this overwhelming uncomfortable feeling. I felt hot and sick in my stomach and I had the intrusive thought that I needed to check the apartment door to make sure that it was locked. I tried to brush it off, but I couldn't, so I got up to look. Just as I got there, I heard someone open the screen door on the outer house door. I looked and the door was locked. Then I heard the actual door to the house open and someone step into the entryway. I was terrified. I know no one lives upstairs and my landlord said he would let me know if someone was moving in. We don't get visitors this late or without a phone call first. Also with this pandemic and social distancing, no one should be coming over. Then I heard a click. I recognize the click as the sound the motion light makes when it turns on. Then I hear a male voice say, Oh shit! And the sound of someone running out of the house. I was terrified. I stood there trying to process what just happened. From the time I heard the screen door open until a solid minute after the person ran out, I stood there frozen. The neighborhood dogs were barking their heads off all night, and they only do that if someone is around that they don't know. I think that someone who doesn't know that the house is a duplex attempted to let themselves in. The light which is way too bright for that tiny little entryway came on and scared the person away. I woke up the hubs and we called the police. They said that since the person was not trying to get into my apartment exactly, that they weren't coming out. The best they would do is drive by a few times. Yeah, real comforting. Last night I was again up late. The dogs were barking like crazy, yet again. At a little after midnight, I hear a noise. I mute the TV. I realize that someone is pounding, not knocking, but full on pounding on the outer house door. Not my apartment door, thank god. I was freaked out. I wanted to go in and wake up the hubs but thought better of it. There is a window beside the outer house door where he was knocking, and that window is our bedroom window. Because hubs was sleeping and the lights were on in the living room, but off in the bedroom, I thought if I opened the door, the person standing on the porch hammering on the door 
would see the light and then know someone was here. And I was afraid to let whoever was out there know someone was here. I sat here for over 10 minutes of banging. It was not stopping. I thought maybe it was the police because of the call I made the night before. So I called the police, told them what was happening, and about what happened the night before, and about my call to them, and I asked could it be the police at my door. He looked into it and said that as far as he could tell, no, whoever it was, it was not the police. He also said not to open the door. He said he was sending police out and if someone was still banging on the door, they would talk to them and he said he would call when he knew what was going on. The banging stopped about five minutes after hanging up with the police dispatcher, but I never got a phone call back, so I don't know if the police ever showed up. Tonight, the dogs are already barking and have been for the past hour. My hubs decided that I'm going to bed early and he is staying up. I doubt I will sleep anyways. I made him promise that no matter what he hears, he won't unlock and open our front door. A few years ago, I was renting a house in Northern California. The neighborhood was just outside the suburbs. It seemed like the perfect balance of having space and having nice neighbors close enough to not feel isolated. The area had no street lights, so it was very dark at night, especially if there were clouds blocking the moonlight. It didn't bother me though. It made my little house feel even more quaint on dark nights. I got home from work one day in midwinter. It was a cloudy night, so pulling up to my house, I saw only what my headlights and front porch light illuminated. When I got out of my car, I caught a whiff of cigarette smoke. That was odd as I had never smelled that before around that house. I didn't see anyone nearby so I ignored it and went inside. I had just got off a shift with a few hours of overtime so I felt pretty tired even though it wasn't even 7 yet. I decided to take a shower and call it a night. I woke up sometime later sure that I heard a noise inside my house. I wasn't worried right away because my friend would sometimes stop by to use my shower after work on his way to his night classes. I even gave him spare keys so he could stop by even if I wasn't home. He would always text me to let me know beforehand though, and I hadn't heard my phone go off. I reached over to my bedside table and picked up my cell phone to see if my friend had sent me a text. The bright light from my phone's screen and number pad blinded me. There were the days before phones had a light sensor that would dim the screen in the dark, and this particular phone was so bright I could use it as a flashlight. Through squinted eyes I could make out that it was 9 something, but I couldn't tell if I had an unread text or not. I set my phone aside and called out my friend's name. There were a couple of seconds of silence before I heard loud footfalls as someone started running through the bottom floor of my house. I leaped out of bed and ran to the closet. They were already up the stairs by the time I had opened the door and stepped inside. That house had three rooms upstairs, two bedrooms on either side of the hallway, the one I was in, and a spare, and a bathroom at the end. The bedroom doors were both closed, but the bathroom door was cracked open. I heard whoever was in my house thunder down the hallway past my door and into the bathroom. Thank God he did. That gave me enough time to open the attic access in the ceiling of my closet and hoist myself up. I had just started to lift myself up when the person ran back out of the bathroom. My feet were barely inside of the attic when my bedroom door burst open. I heard footsteps run into my room and stop. When they didn't see me in that room, they ran back to the hallway and into the other room, which just had boxes stacked in a corner, some weights, and a table where I painted my miniature models. I guess they decided if someone were hiding, it would be in the bedroom because they charged back into my room and turned on the light. A moment later, the closet door was ripped open. I was crouched in my attic, just a foot or so away from the access door, so I could try to stop them if they started to climb up. From my vantage point, all I could see was from about their knee down. They were wearing dirty blue jeans with frayed cuffs and worn work boots. After a few seconds of looking in the closet, 
They stepped away, and I heard a loud crash come from my room, followed by a scream of frustration and anger. That scream was the most unnerving part of the incident for me. It reminded me far too much of my stepfather who would scream in a similar way when he lost his temper. He would eventually be put in a mental hospital for several mental disorders that resulted in erratic and violent tendencies. The man in my house ran back down the stairs. I heard crashes and clatters as things were thrown around and furniture was knocked over. I stayed crouched in the attic. I had left my cell phone when I ran for the closet, and I wasn't certain I could climb down without him hearing. After some time, the noises stopped. I started counting slowly. When I reached 1,000, I decided it was safe enough to climb down and call the police. The first thing that I noticed when I exited the closet was the intruder had flipped my bed over, I assume in an attempt to find me. That was the loud noise I had heard after he stepped away from the closet. I couldn't find my cell phone, so I went to the landline by the bed and called the police. I waited in my room until I heard them call out from downstairs. The first floor was a mess. I had expected that. Chairs had been knocked over, the sofa had been flipped. All the books, pictures, and knickknacks I had on my shelves were strewn across the floor. The cupboards in the kitchen had been opened and all the boxed and canned foods had been thrown to the ground. As far as I could tell though, the only thing missing was a single knife out of the wooden block in my kitchen. The police checked the house from top to bottom. They found that the side door had been forced open by something like a crowbar. They also found a few cigarette butts along my fence line along with some foil and an empty pen tube, which the police said people often use to smoke meth, so they think he had been watching my house for a while. I realized that he must have been out there smoking a cigarette when I got home. They collected up the evidence and told me I should stay with my family or friends that night and get that door fixed as soon as possible. I opted to just not sleep. I moved the shelf over to block the broken door and spent the next couple hours cleaning things up. I would often go to the window with a flashlight and shine it along the fence line where the police found the cigarette butts and foil, but I didn't see anything. The next day I called to have the door fixed and motion lights installed at the back and sides of my house. I ran a phone cable up into the attic and added a landline. I never wanted to be stuck up there without a phone again. Nothing else happened at that house though. I lived there another three years without an incident. One more precaution that I took was practicing getting out of my bed, going to my closet and climbing into the attic as quickly and as quietly as possible. I even kept at it when I moved, except now I go to a crawl space at the back of the closet instead of the attic. I tried to not think about what would have happened if I had been a bit slower getting to the attic or if he hadn't gone into the bathroom at the end of the hall first.